that guy that we have to work for, he won't even reply when you tell him you're sick. So why do you want him? Yeah, mm -hmm. God. Um, I remember on my first day with Tom, he took me to like this strip mall Chinese restaurant that had like a B rating. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when I first showed up, because I had such, I was young, so yeah. I was 21, I had such an expectation of what a guy should do, right? Take you to an expensive restaurant. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, I really like their food here. Yeah. And so as soon as I started to see how happy he was at this restaurant oh. and like the conversation we had, it actually um, flipped my mind into what I wanted from a guy. Mm -hmm. And so I, is that like a good place to start to go like, well, who just like, again, I don't want anyone to feel like it's um, their fault, but I do like to always take inventory of myself. Yeah, so would you recommend someone took inventory of the types of guys they go for, what resonates with them yeah. and then flip it? Like yeah. what's that? What, what is it about the narcissist that had you so hooked? What is it about now? Folk, even the fact that when I have female clients that come to me and say, my ex is a narcissist, I say, we're not going to mention that word because what I want oh. to do is I undo the damage that created such a toxic attachment to a man that doesn't treat you well. Forget labeling him. That actually, what victimhood does is it's almost the same emotional energy as being a narcissist. Me being a victim for the rest of my life requires the same level of self-indulgence, self-pity, self-focus as a narcissist. What I want you to do is remove that label and replace it to, I made a bad choice because at that point in time, I, and I want you to complete the sentence. And then you won't re repeat that behavior. But if you just say he's a narcissist, what will happen is you re avoid the internal reflection it takes to avoid that mistake again. So try and figure out what traits in him did you find so attractive? Maybe you like somebody extrovert. Maybe you like somebody who's um, always asking for things because it makes you feel needed. Maybe you like something. Whatever it is that you are liking, make sure you recognize it comes at a cost. Do you really want that experience again? And then try and avoid it. And I just want to make sure people really hear yeah. that, Mrs. Because this is really this is really powerful, like really powerful. But I want people. It's not about blaming yourself. No. It's just about identifying the things that had happened. Like just like yeah. I had said with me, right? Like I look back and I say, oh, I didn't show up to be the person I wanted to be. What do I need to change in order to do that? Yeah. So I actually, it's, I think it's probably like the focus in, thing, in right? In your toxic relationship, you described it as you having low self-esteem yeah. he would never be able to run with lisa today no so, shit no yeah, fuck no, no. <laughs> you're so right in the world is filled with bad men and bad women but if we um cultivate an atmosphere of self-reflection and self-esteem they won't enter our world so i really want people to take mm. back the control by focusing on themselves the message now is becoming even more polarizing right now with like the the red pill mo movement mm. where guys i just heard the other day where someone told me that I try not to pay too much attention yeah. to it because I think it's all very Wild, toxic yeah. yeah and it's just like it's just getting worse but maybe I do need to pay attention yeah. to it but like I heard where it's like someone saying that the Red Bull community now is saying well a woman that has slept with another guy is like a used car yeah and it's like what uh, fellas when you're starting to like compare women who have yeah. had the sexual experience just like you've had the sexual experience to used cars it's like it's just become even more polarizing yeah and the thing is it's such a stupid statement because the reality is let's say we take an average woman and an average man and them shaming her for a body count the reality is the woman uh, women tend to have to reject more than they select what i mean by that is let's say for example she's got a body count of five and this guy and when has you say two, body count that means how many how many people they slept let's say uh, she slept with uh, eight men and he slept with four girls and he thinks she's such a slut but the reality is she might have had 28 men trying to sleep with her if she's she's still rejecting more than she's accepting you might have just slept with every woman that you had an opportunity <laughs> with so how is that a fair That's such a yeah. good point. The reality is you should, instead of focusing on the people that have many numbers, focus on her selection process or and his. Same with him. If you are going to be with a man and think, oh, he's only slept with eight women, so he's great, but has he ever said no to women? If he's always accepting any energy, men and women, if they're accepting any energy that comes into place, they haven't sorted their self-esteem out. Whereas if they can be selective about who they're engaging with, then it shows that they've got a handle over who, their sexual experiences. So it's not a number. It's about the ability to turn down sex. And hopefully that should be available in men and women. Never even thought about it like that. Yeah. Um, so what do you think about women chasing men then? 
I don't see anything wrong in trying, but do not insist. And that's men and women. I'd say even with men, if you are trying and trying and she keeps saying no, don't, don't push it. Don't push it with anybody. There's always somebody out there that will love you and like you for you. If you have to keep insisting, unfortunately, you're going to have to keep contouring yourself to, until he likes you. And it's going to become exhausting. So definitely put in the effort. Show somebody some interest. Show them some connection. But don't chase. If you can avoid it, try and avoid it. Chasing is slightly more more convincing somebody to like you back. We don't need to do that. Mm. Oh, what about the word pursue a man? Does that yeah, make is that uh, different? What would you say is pursuing a man? Oh, um, approaching him, like DMing him, let's say. It's like, hey, I saw you on Instagram. Are you interested to I go out? I don't see out? anything wrong in that. I don't see anything wrong in that. What I do think is wrong is when you don't accept the feedback. I think if you want to pursue, pursue men, women, pursue each other. It's, we're living in a world where we don't need to be ch children. But if you don't accept feedback, that's when it becomes negative and that's when it becomes uh, a little bit desperate. But if you take the feedback, oh, they didn't like me, no worries, you don't take it personal. But pursuing, absolutely, do what you've got to do. I don't think it should be so arbitrary, black and white. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think it should be men and women, but sometimes it's the person with the higher self-esteem that has to make the first move. It might be the person with the higher boundaries that suggests, okay, are we going to label this? It doesn't necessarily have to be the person who's most interested. Because when I think about the men that have approached me over the years, I wasn't less interested than they were in me it's just simply I didn't have the confidence to go up to them so I don't think it has to be so black and white sometimes some people are just afraid of rejection more than others Ooh. so that can happen That's fascinating I yeah. love that mindset so what is it that then that men feel like they need in a relationship and women feel like they need in a relationship I think for women, they need to feel heard and seen. They need to know that what they're saying matters and what the, their presence matters. So if you're sat next to a man and he is on his phone the whole time, he doesn't acknowledge you, you're crying, he doesn't feel anything, you're happy, he doesn't show any uh, attachment to you. For women, we start to feel very invisible because we love connection. We can actually put our phone away and talk to our partner. It's not a problem for us. We love connection. So when she starts to feel unheard and unseen emotionally and physically, um, she will start to turn into a person she doesn't like. She'll become nagging, she'll become negative, she'll become bitter, she'll lose confidence. So being heard and seen is really important for, uh, for and women. And passive-aggressive, passive I think, aggressive, as well. Passive-aggressive, yeah, unfortunately, we become like that. For a man, I think what he needs is, they always say respect, 